welcome, friends, to today's program. We have a blessing for you today. We have an interview with a Carmela Ross, and uh, I want to welcome her to the program, and I want you to listen closely because there's a message here that she's got that will just bless you. So don't get sidetracked with anything else. Just zero in and ask God to let you get what He wants you to get. Thank you, Carmela, for being on today's program. And thank you for having me. Uh, Carmela is a sister in the Lord that I really have just met. But uh, it, isn't it wonderful when we get to meet other brothers and sisters in the Lord? And her spirit is so in tune with God till I felt it when I first met her. So I know it's going to be a good program for you. Uh, Carmela, tell us a little bit about yourself, your testimony. Um, are you the only child? Did you have a lot of sisters and brothers? Or? Well, I have one sister and two brothers and um, was born in the Republic of Panama. Uh, born and raised and speaking Spanish. Both of my parents were uh, choir directors at our church. Wow. And uh, my mom played the piano and made all of us play the piano. So there was music <laughs> in all of us from very early. Let me ask you, do you think it really makes a difference in the lives of children when, when uh, parents bring them up knowing the Lord and bring them up in the church? Definitely. Definitely, even though I had not uh, committed my life to the Lord um, in those early years, just hearing the word over and over, by the time I got into my teenage years, it made a difference because I knew what the word was. I knew what God expected from us. So um, it's good to have that because you can fall back on that and have a sincere conversation with God, knowing what God wants, because it's been told to you over and over. As far as I know, I just about was born in church. We went to church so often. <laughs> so, um, but I didn't really know God until I was 16. Um, as a child, I realized that walking up at the end of the service for the invitation, as it used to be done back then, and uh, asking to be baptized would be something that was pleasing to my parents, especially my mom. So I did that at the age of six, but I really didn't know the Lord until a particular trip that we took um, when I was 16. My mom had this group, this choral group, and we would travel from Panama, Republic of Panama, that is, to Miami, and we'd charter a bus, and we had lined up certain churches that we would minister to and give our cantatas. In uh, this particular trip, we were in Texas, and um, we had just ministered, done our songs about the love of Jesus, about God, and, but I didn't really know the Lord. I knew of the Lord. And I was with the group because just about was born in church, you know. But after uh, the presentation, just before boarding the bus and heading back to Miami where we would take an airplane back to the Republic of Panama, mm -hmm. I had this conversation with the pastor's wife, the, the youth pastor's wife. And it was so amazing to see a young, beautiful, and it struck me that she was so beautiful and in church. And I thought, well, she could be somewhere else with her beauty. It would take her different places. But I just listened to her give her testimony about how she knew that God loved her and she's waiting for the Lord to return. And she looks up at the clouds and she can imagine the clouds parting and Jesus returning and the meeting in the air. And I thought, she's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it seemed so real to her. Yeah. So when I boarded that bus that day, I looked up to the clouds and I was afraid <laughs> because of what she had said. She, she could see the clouds parting and Jesus coming. And when I did that, 
the Holy Spirit just came over me and started filling me from my toes up, 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 up. Oh, and it yes. came all the way up to my neck. That's the only way that I can explain it. The sensation was just taking me over. I was just being filled more and more. And I, and I had to say, oh, God, please stop, because they won't understand. The same people that are in the bus with me, 40 young kids singing about God, they won't understand that I just discovered that God is real. He's not just a story that we... Uh, here. have been told about uh, the resurrection is true Jesus did rise again he is alive he is in heaven and he's coming back he's alive as you and I are alive and and they would just think that I'm crazy so I I ask God to please n stop it and you know it's like I've heard that the Holy Spirit is gentle and he will not force himself on on you and I thought, and it stopped. And later I realized, wow, if it had continued, I think I'd just start speaking in tongues because the, it was so powerful and overwhelming, you know. But he stopped. But that was the day at 16 when I realized Jesus is alive, God is real, and I owe him my life. Wow. And you've been walking with him ever since? Ever since, ever since. Wow. Every year getting closer and closer and growing and growing. And, the, you know, once we accept the Lord, it's not it. It's a lot of growing to take place, yes. you know, especially in the area of love, which uh, leads me to a particular song that I wrote that has to do with love. I mean, Jesus concluded all the Ten Commandments to this one law. Mm -hmm. Love God mm -hmm. and love your neighbor. your neighbor. Right. I have a question now. Yeah. It got up to here. Did, 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 did you ever get to complete that? Did it ever? Yes, years okay. later, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to yeah. You didn't miss out on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Years later at an Assembly of God church, yeah. I I because we were Baptists at that time. Oh. And like this group of Baptists are not gonna understand this. Oh, <laughs> but um mm -hmm. I think that um the time that we're living in mm -hmm. Are different from when I was a little girl, you know. And and nowadays people understand that it's not a crazy thing that the Holy Spirit can fill you, and then that you can indeed speak in tongues. Now I didn't know at that time that that could have been what would would have happened mm -hmm. if I hadn't asked God to stop. But uh, my point in mentioning that is that He's so gentle. I asked Him to stop. And just like that, he stopped. Hmm. Hmm. So that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And well, that's something that people need to understand: is that uh, God's not going to force Himself upon you. You have to invite Him. There's yeah. a sensitivity of the Holy Spirit, and when you're ready, they're ready. But you have to be ready, and you have to do the inviting. Right. Yeah, not friends, do, do, do. you can have as much of Jesus as you want. Yeah. He wants to fill you. He wants to. And when we get to heaven, we're not going to divide up into groups and have the Baptist here and the Methodist here and the Charismatic here. We're all the body of Christ. That's right. And whatever denomination you are, your goal should be to desire more of Christ, to be more Christ-like to fulfill his plan and purpose for your life because he does have a plan and a purpose for your life. He's got a plan and purpose for all of our lives. He does. And he will mm -hmm. lead you and guide you and show you. Amen. Um, okay, let's move along then. Uh, you you have a wonderful husband out here and have uh, four children? Yes, we do have four children. Um, so that same year that uh, I was 16 and I had mm -hmm. had this encounter with the Lord, I, um, it was my, the, the year that I was graduating from school. I graduated at 16. And that year, before leaving Panama, I asked God to please choose my husband for me. Oh. 
my mom was moving to the United States. She was going to pursue a PhD at uh, University of Miami, which she did. And um, I only had five months left to graduate from school, and I knew I was coming over to the United States to continue my education and, of course, be with my mother. Um, and I asked the Lord, choose the husband for me. I don't want to date around. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to waste my time, and I don't want to waste their time either. So you be the pilot of my life, and you do the choosing because once you choose, it will be the right choice because at this point my parents had separated and I thought, I've seen too many people who begin loving each other and end up not loving each other. And if it could happen in my own family, yeah. it seemed like it was bound to happen again without God. So. God chose my husband because I uh, graduated from high school, uh, which is in December, because in, in Panama, our school year is within the fiscal, the fiscal year is within the calendar year. And in December, I graduated and I was here, um, I think it was the 27th of December. And on December 31st, we had that, um, in Panama, we call it Old Year's Eve, um, but I think you call it New Year's. Uh, anyway, it was the 31st of December, and we had that service that goes on th throughout midnight. And uh, at midnight, the pastor uh, uh, of the church that we went to in Miami said, Now, husbands uh, and wives, give each other the first kiss of the year. <laughs> and since I was only there for, what, four days or five days have been in the United States, I looked around to see, well, who will kiss, kiss who? And then the pastor says, now, uh, fiancés and, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends, you can also give each other. Free. And I looked around, and I saw this handsome guy, tall and handsome. And he didn't kiss anybody. So I said, God, I just want you to notice that guy over there. I don't know if he's the one, but I just want you to consider that he could be the one. <laughs> and I was referring to my husband who became my husband 11, uh, a year later in December, the following year we were married. So yeah, and we've been married now uh, this December. Okay. We'll make what? I can't even count. I think it's 43 years. Wow. <laughs> what a blessing. Yes, yes. What a blessing. Uh, and you've got four children. Four. Yeah. Two boys and two girls, oh. yes. Wow. That, that, that is such a blessing to hear someone share how God's blessed them, isn't it, friends? Uh, now, I want to talk about your music a little bit. Uh, how did God lead you into writing music and into singing? Okay, we're going to try to make this fast. And if I'm too long, when did you interrupt me and try to keep me focused, okay? I always wanted to sing. Mm. When I was five years old, I told my mom, why do I have to go to school? Does J Michael Jackson go to school? <laughs> you know, let me sing now. And, and she convinced me, because my mom was an educator, that it, I had to go to school because I needed to know my math, because I needed to count my money. I needed to know how to count my money. Mm -hmm. You know, I needed geography to know where I was going. And, mm -hmm. and once I graduated, then I could sing. But I was 16 and five months before graduating. I meet God, and God is real. And I'm thinking, oh no, <laughs> this is January, and God, and uh, I'm in the United States, and there is this um, potential for a contract with some executives from Sony, and um, they picked us up in a limousine and took us to their mansion, and I was could not believe my eyes and they brought us back and I I went I had not told my mom that I had this real relationship with God but I went straight to my room and I said God what about this and you know he, he said um, you can choose that and you will be famous I said good 
you will have money. I'm like, so far so good. Uh, you'll be hooked on uppers and downers, uppers to perform and downers to go to sleep. And I thought, not so good. Um, and remember, this is a time when I'm new in the Lord and God speaks to me and I hear him and there's no doubt that it's God. And, and we just have this love affair going, right? And uh, he says, um, you'll become an alcoholic. And I thought, oh, no. And I could, I could see how that could happen. And um, you will have many husbands. And I thought, oh, no, this is not what I want. Remember, I had just said a few months ago, you choose my husband. Yeah. But he's saying, if you go this route, you'll have many husbands. And they, a, a few of them will really love you, but you won't love them because you will become callous in your heart. Oh, and I really? thought, how horrific. And he said, but worst of all, at the end, you lose out with me because you will stray away from me. Oh, and it won't be because... I don't want you back. It will be because you won't want to come oh, back man. because of oh, all that you would have to give up. Oh my God. And I said, well, I can't. I, I, you know, it, 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 it was, it was heavy on me what? because this is all I wanted since yeah. I was five. Yeah. And here we meet the executives from Sony. Oh, the girl can sing. Oh, let's do something. And I have to go out and tell my mom, if those men contact you again, tell them that your daughter has changed her mind. <laughs> Because, uh, and I'm trying to, uh, you know, do this fast, is that God had asked me for my voice within that same time period, a day or two. Mm. God asked me for my voice. And I said, oh, no, God, what would you ask for my voice? It's the only thing that I have that is anything. It, it's the only thing that means anything. The only thing of value. And he said, precisely, it's because you value it that I'm asking you for it. Because I said, it's the only thing that distinguishes me from anyone else, from any other human. Otherwise, I'm just going to be just anybody else. I, I could just, just wait to die. There won't be anything special about me. <laughs> and he said, it's because you value it that I'm asking you for it. It took me two weeks to say to God, you can have my voice. So I thought I was giving up music completely because back in those days it's not like today we had choirs and we only sang hymns mm. <laughs> there was no none of this contemporary christian music that is so prevalent today mm -hmm. so i thought it was over i'll just get married and have a few kids and train them up in the lord and they just you know do whatever but music is out but it was 10 years later Mm. Ten years later, I woke up with a dream of a song, <laughs> and I didn't know it was a new song. So I, uh, it, it, it was so vivid. I could hear the entire song, the, the, the entire presentation. The, so I went to my favorite uh, Christian bookstore to find the song. And I had a friend that used to work there because I did do some singing at different, you know, praise the Lord programs in TBN, local TBNs. And um, this guy uh, was was connected and he knew all of the music that was coming out. And I said, find me the song that's called Jesus is Coming Again. And he says, Carmela, who write, who sings it? And I said, well, I think one of those Group, rock groups like Petra huh? back in those days, you know, yeah. and it, no, he had a catalog like this for every year and said, no, they didn't write that. And so I gave him another name and another name at four hours went by and nobody wrote that song. He had himself had never heard that song. Then he says, by the way, where did you hear it? And I'm like, uh oh, I got to tell him that I dreamt it. Anyway, I left that day after four hours, left the, the music, the, the bookstore, the Christian bookstore. And I sat in my little Honda with the windows rolled up. And I said, God, four hours, this 
no, he couldn't find it. And softly, the Lord says, guess who writes that song? And I said, God, no more guessing. That's all we've been doing all morning. No, don't tease me like this. Carmela, guess who sings, who writes that song? Okay, Lord, you know, this is not funny. No, I'm not guessing. I'm not guessing. No, 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 no. Guess who writes that song? And I said, oh, oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that I write? Wait a minute. If, well, if I'm the one who writes that song, I better go home and write it. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. So that was the first one. Jesus is coming again, and Jesus is coming again still has not been recorded. Wow. What? Yes, what? yes. What? What's the, what's the holdup? Oh, is well. He, is he, do you think he's waiting for a you know, moment? You know, what I've he... learned, what I've learned, and it took me a while to learn it, is that it's God's timing and not okay. your timing. Okay. It's you think God's it's going to happen okay. right then and there. Yeah. And it's like right now, God gave it to me now. So everybody move out the way because I got to record <laughs> this song and the world needs to hear it yeah, now. <laughs> but it's his timing. It is okay. his timing and okay. it is, I'm coming into his timing. And that song was given to me in 1989, wow. 89. So, yeah. Wow. Well, this part where you're, you're, back and forth with the Lord and he's telling you if you sign with this group he knows exactly everything that could that's going to happen and that he would give that to me yeah, yeah. he's going to allow you to do that but well, man that's... if if everybody could have that kind of a revelation about their life I mean he hasn't done of... that with other things no think he, about he the has number not of laid it out for me avoid. like that yeah this is the that only thing amazing. that he has laid out for me that this was way amazing. yeah amazing. If, well, if, if well, even there... Christians would get that that much yes. information about their about their life how many problems you could forestall or put off or never even have to put up with well you know if we would just seek god more oh, yeah, and seek yeah. his will for everything yeah. in our lives then he would show us yeah you know but we yeah. get wrapped oh, up don't we in life yeah yeah caught up in the things of the, the world things and the, of the world you know and our agenda and we got to go to work and we got to do this and we got to do that. And we grow apart from God because it's never like at the beginning when, when we're in that in love time that mm -hmm. we are yeah. so close. We talk yeah. to him all the time. We're excited to talk to him and he reciprocates, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's like we need constantly to come back to our first love. Yeah. And oh, and commune with yes. him. Oh, yeah. now there's some wisdom. <laughs> well, you, uh, hey you guys, have, listen. <laughs> that you was have wisdom. Wrote uh, a song that you have uh, been releasing on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. It, well, it's called Help Us, and uh, Help Us was written in 1995, <laughs> and. Um, Finally, and this year, 2021, it's finally been recorded and released. <clears throat> it's the only release that is of this song. It just took that many years for it to be released. The song um, is directed at the Church of God, the Bride of Christ. And I am drawn to Jesus's prayer the night before he is arrested and when he prays to God that that we be as one not the world he says I'm not praying for the world but I'm praying for those you gave me right. that they may right. become one that they may become one as you and I are one that the world may know that you sent me and that you love me and uh his request before the Lord is that by our love, the world will know that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. In other words, that we be famous for our love, not be famous for our judgment mm -hmm. or a critical or spirit. Or, yeah. No, we're supposed to be famous because of the way we love. The world is supposed to look at how Christians love and say, there goes a Christian, mm -hmm. you know. 
But in this time and day that we're in, sadly, that is not the case. Many people are not attracted to be Christians because they their idea of a Christian is a person who is highly judgmental and has zero love. Mm. But this is Jesus's request. And it, what he requested it 2,000 years ago. And uh, I would be naive to think that it's more relevant today than then. I think it's just as relevant. I wasn't there and I've been mm. there for many times. But today, I can tell you that in my life, I feel is more relevant today than when I was five years old or when I was a teenager because mm. I see so much separation. Let me ask you, Tom, unfortunately, is clicking on. So how can, where can they go to to hear this song? Uh, they can listen to it on YouTube. Just um, look me up by my name, Carmela Estella. That's C-A-R-M-E-L-A, Estella, E-S-T-E-L-A. And uh, Doug will put all that information on the okay, screen for our, right. our audience to catch. Can, yeah. For people mm -hmm. to look at. Uh, do you know, is... God shared with you any plans that he has for this song for you? Not really. Um, I The this, this song just came as a prayer because I was going through mm. some problems. I was being criticized, and I didn't have what it took to fix it. So I got down on my knees, and I was completely out of words, and all I said was, help us mm -hmm. to join together in love. And I paused, and then again I said, help us to join together in love. I had no other words. So my third line was again, help us to join together in love. But this time I sung it, that the world may know we belong to Jesus Christ. We are disciples of Jesus Christ because the criticism and the problems that I was having wasn't with the world, was with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. We, the body of Christ, needs to love each other. So this song is really directed at the body of Christ, not at the world, but at the body of Christ, that we become one, that we love each other, that the world may notice and be attracted to Christians, well, Christianity. That's powerful. Wow. That's, that's powerful. Friends, you need to look this up. You need to look it up. If they, uh, if they wanted to, do you have it out so they could get a copy of it? Oh, yeah. It's on every online platform as Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Deezer, and Amazon, everywhere. Good. Okay. That's great. Well, we're out of time. It has been such a privilege having you Thanks. on our program today. Hang it, Frank. Oh, it's been beautiful. <laughs> this is Bobby. This is Frank. And Carmela saying, God loves you, my friend. Yes, he does. So do we. See you next week.